Hey guys, welcome back for part 2 in the series where I build a cheap and cheerful CNC of my own design. In the previous part I assembled all the mechanics of the CNC, and today we're going to cover off the electronics and put the machine through its paces. So we've covered off pretty well how the mechanics of the machine is going to work, but we haven't covered what's actually going to drive it. At the heart of the machine is an Arduino Uno paired with a CNC shield. Add some stepper drivers to the mix to control the NEMA 17 motors, a power supply to run this all, and some other miscellaneous electronics, and I should have a working CNC. But what's running on the Arduino Uno? What code? That is Gerbil. And it's here that we're going to start off the project today. After plugging in our Arduino Uno, downloading the requisite libraries, and installing those libraries into the Arduino IDE, there's just one small tweak we need to do before hitting the go button on uploading our Gerbil code. Gerbil has a number of settings that are configurable once your software is running on Arduino, but one thing that isn't configurable after the fact is how the homing operation of the machine works. In the case of my machine, there's no Z-axis limit switches. So this operation needs to be commented out so the machine doesn't crash the z-axis. After that, we can load our Gerbil uploader into the IDE and flash the board. As for the electrical wiring of my CNC shield, this is a high level architecture of how I have everything connected. You can see that all power coming into the electronics box passes through an e-stop before going to a power supply, a relay for control of the spindle and other loads, and the Arduino Uno. So I've placed all of the larger subsystems into the electronics box, and this is how it's looking so far. You can see I've got the e-stop, interfaces for the limit switches, motors, I've got a solid state relay in there for switching the spindle, fans for forced air cooling, and my power supply hooked up to mains through that e-stop. But there's a few things yet to be done. I need to hook up the fans to the 12 volt power supply, I need to install the Arduino Uno and hook it up to 12 volt power, I need to check the safety system of the whole electronics box, and then connect up the motors and limit switches to their connectors and to the CNC shield. Connecting up the fans is simple and provides us an opportunity to check the safety system of our electronics. With power applied and the e-stop disengaged, the fans spin up, which is good. Once the e-stop is triggered, we see that they spin down, which is reassuring. Now we can get onto more fun stuff, building out the actual brains of the CNC. The CNC shield only requires stepper motor drivers be fitted to the board along with a couple of jumpers to get it to function. But a mandatory operation before using the CNC shield to drive any motors is that we set the VREF voltage. This in turn sets the amount of current that the stepper drivers will supply to the motors and in turn determines how much torque the motors will have. The rest of the electrical wiring involves assembling various harnesses to go between the CNC shield and the GX connectors, and assemblies to go between the GX connectors and the NEMA 17 steppers, or the limit switches on the X and Y axes. With all of those harnesses now assembled and installed in the electronics box, we can apply the final touches to the CNC shield and Arduino, and connect all of those cables up. With, so with the electronics box fully assembled and ready to go, let's go over to the machine. 
Since the last video, I've installed drag chains, the limit switches, and 8mm flange bearings to support the lead screws at the end of the X and Y axes. All the motor and limit switches are ready to plug in, and I've labelled both the cable and the electronics box so I have reference in future as to what's what. At this point in time, I'm using Universal G-Code Sender, or UGS, to run the machine. This software loads the G-Code and converts all the operations required into linear moves. It operates much like how a 3D printer would load G-Code to be able to print an object, however, this doesn't reside on the CNC machine itself. It runs directly from my laptop. After plugging in our Arduino Uno's USB cable to the machine running UGS, we can then connect to it and see all of the settings under the hood in Gerbil. Fortunately, while you can directly edit the settings at the heart of Gerbil, there's a configurator in UGS which takes care of most of the heavy lifting. This setup wizard steps through various operations you need to do to calibrate your machine. First off, it provides you the means to confirm that each axis is travelling in the right direction and invert them if necessary. The second page covers off calibrating the number of steps per millimetre for each axis to ensure that a command for a 10mm move equates to a 10mm travel in that particular axis. In this screen, all you need to do is command a move a certain number of millimetres, measure the resultant move amount, put that number into the measure section, and UGS will calculate the calibration figure that is your new steps per millimetre for that axis. On the next screen, we can enable limit switches to let Gerbil know that there are indicators present that can be used to detect when an axis reaches a hard limit. Page 6 provides us the option to set up automatic homing, which is something I want as it provides an easy means to get the machine back to zero. Finally, we can optionally enable soft limits, which will make sure that any commanded move is not greater than the length of the particular axis that it was commanded on. In the end, I decided to turn this off because it was chucking a whole bunch of errors for some reason, just when I wasn't even commanding a move that was too great, so I don't know what happened there. The only other settings that you may want to configure in the near term are those for the acceleration and feed parameters, as they do tend to be a bit low out of the box. But with a router as a spindle, with a cutting tool fitted, and the Z-axis zeroed, let's see what this thing can do. Nice. I am more than impressed with that. Let's try something else. Amazing! That's way more precision than I expected. This is using a 2mm bit if you're interested. So with everything seeming to work pretty well, the last thing to do is seal up the electronics box. I'm gonna tap those holes so we can fit the fasteners to put the lid on. Let's rock! Let's make some more chips! So to sum up, I'm pretty impressed with the capabilities of this machine. I haven't yet cut hardwood, that's going to be coming down the pipe real soon though. The only issue I have found with this machine is the Z-axis stepper is struggling with the weight of the router, so I did have to crack up that V-ref voltage to the max of 1.2 volts to give that motor every chance of being able to pull up that, that tool when it needs to. As you can see, it's cutting MDF and plywood amazing. So let's kick on and get some more projects going with this. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.